excellent news. Now, how do you fancy becoming part of a scheme that says the craft that you do could make you money? Well, Debbie Gent's here to help you. She's a business mentor from a place called the Sorting Office in Eastleigh. It sounds as if she works for the Post Office, but she doesn't. They're offering creative spaces for a number of artists and designers from a variety of disciplines. What sort of disciplines? Well, ceramics. You don't get more discipline than ceramics, I can tell you. And glass as well. And mixed media, which is basically using glass and ceramics together with, well, mud. That's mixed media, isn't it? Of course it is. Yes. I know nothing, you see, but Debbie Gent knows everything. Debbie, good morning. Morning, Nick. So, look, uh, the sorting office is not a sorting office anymore, is it? It's not, Nick, no. It, it used to be a sorting office, yeah. uh, but we're part of a regeneration project, yes. which was a European project called Recreate. Right. Uh, and it was very much about regenerating buildings which no longer had a function right. uh, and transforming them into space for, for artists to use. And so you got rid of all the postmen then, they're no longer there then. No, they're, they're not no there. longer there. But you decided to still call it the sorting office. Yes, it's been there since the 20s and we, we've kept that name. Right. So That's we're the sorting office studios. The sorting office studios, right. You say studios because it's not just somewhere to just display items that people come along and buy there. There's actual work going on there. There's work going on there. We have 17 designers who all have their own studio space. Um, they have a large production house uh, room, which it, they can use for holding workshops. Right. Um, the, you know, they have their own. So there are some lockable spaces. So we have a couple of jewellers who have a, a lockable space. But the building's really beautiful. It's light and airy. It's all painted white. Yeah. It has high ceilings. Um, it's it's great. It's so really you've recycled productive. something that we don't need anymore. And, we have. And, and turned it into something that, that well encourages local artists to be able to not only continue the work they're doing but to sell it as well. Exactly. We have open studios a couple of times a year when where everybody when everybody is welcome. Uh, you can come in and buy from the artists yeah. and the makers, um, speak to them, see how see how they run their businesses, right. watch them screen printing or, or making some jewellery, um, and, and connect with them. So it's, it, it's, it's a studio space for them to work in. Sometimes it's a studio space for them to be able to sell their work, but it's not a kind of open shop all the time. Not all the time. Not at the moment, Nick. Um, it, it, it's sort of a couple of times a year, so right. June and November. Yeah. So the 17th and 18th of June, come along, um, and see come some along of the work to our open studios. So yeah. the people who are making things out... What outlets do they have for the products that they, they, they create? Uh, they all have websites uh -huh. um, and they also run the workshops. Um, Where people come down and learn how to do it. They can come and learn. Yeah, and we'll, we have a programme of workshops starting in September, oh, running great. through to December. In, in sort of things like making your own jewellery, doing a bit of ceramics and stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, screen printing. Yeah. Uh, we'll relate it to Christmas as well. Nobody wants to hear about Christmas yet, though. But. You're certainly right. <laughs> just, you sound like a garden centre if you, if you start doing Christmas in July. You don't want to do that, do you? But we so, have to plan ahead, Nick. I can see you that. You're doing that. So how many people have you actually got there, Deb? Uh, so we've, there's 17. Um, we've got... Uh, two jewellery designers, mm -hmm. three or four textile designers, um, some illustrators, and a fashion designer, right. a costumier. You wouldn't think okay. that we had a costumier, but we have. And, and the costumier works. creates what? Well, she creates costumes, For? which are used by historical groups. Oh, right. Um, and or she's, she's working with Bewley on their steampunk uh, exhibition, uh, which they're having soon. Um, we have a quilter who's very skilled, a real expert in her field. She yeah. wins lots of awards. We have a machine embroiderer who, again, a real expert. Yeah. She's been on television right. with Kirsty Allstop. Um, a real wide selection no, of, people so of disciplines. So is there room for anybody else, Debbie? I mean, it sounds um, like a big space to start <laughs> with. I mean, a sorting office, huge space to get all those postmen in, of course, so <laughs> in and out efficiently. So you clear it all out. You create these studios. And are you now full? Um, we are currently full, but I believe we may have a vacancy coming up. Oh, so right. if there is anyone who's interested, please get in touch with us. Uh -huh. We... We often have a waiting list um, because we sort of have about four people apply for each right. space. Yeah. Um, but we, we 
please, you know, please yeah. get in touch. And presumably, you, these spaces, they're not free. I don't get it for nothing. They're not free. They pay a monthly rent. No, I was going to say, I should point that out. Yeah, you know, but we're, I, I've got a space, I'll go down and use that. We're very much about having an affordable yes. space uh, and creating a, a, a small community right. where people can... Um, Network. Yeah, of course. Um, because talking to talking to other artists as well quite useful, I should imagine at times. Yes, because if you're if you are an artist, you often work from home in a bedroom mm. or in a garden shed. Uh, there's no interaction with anyone else. No. Um, they thrive on being together. Great. Um, That's good. And That's rather good. So I can come down then and have a look at some of the things that they're selling as well. But in the main, they're, they're either using the internet to sell things on or they've got their own outlets in other places. I should imagine, for instance, if you're somebody who's doing um, costume, you, you do need... It's not often somebody comes out and says, oh, fancy getting dressed up as a Roman this week. I'll pop down and get one. <laughs> no. you know, it's not the sort of thing you do. And also your textile designers, presumably yes. they're, they're designing because somebody comes to them and says, could you design me something to do X, Y or Z? Exactly. They yeah. they can do bespoke projects, and that's something that I want to... I want to mention in general because um, although a lot of them produce their own designs and their yeah. own ranges, anyone can request a bespoke product, whether it's wallpaper oh, right. or a bespoke piece of jewellery um, or you know, a bespoke range of fabric. Yeah. And we're very keen to work commercially too. Yeah. Um, we invite interior designers to our VIP uh -huh. evening, which we have for open studios. Um, so we're very keen to network. Right. So if you run a business also and you, you want to have something unique in your, in your office space, then then please also do get do in that. touch. I see that. So that, and that's presumably what your job is then, Debbie. It you're is. You're there to sort of sit, They're there to do the creative side and you're there to sort of help them maintain the creative side by doing the business side, so to speak. Most definitely. Yeah. And, and to really ensure that they have a clear strategy for yeah. their business. Yeah, because right. The other thing that makes the sorting office unique is that it offers development programs mm. and mentoring. Right. Um, it's run by a company called A Space uh -huh. in conjunction with Eastleigh right. Borough Council. Right. Um, they have A Space have other studios within Southampton oh, uh, right. at the Arches. Gotcha. Um, so if I want to find out more about what's going on at the sorting office, you, you presumably have a, a website as well, I can sort of get into. We do. It's the sortingoffice.co.uk. Right. So get into that then, the sortingoffice.co.uk. Um, but can we just go back to my business role, mm. being a mentor? So it's very much about um, seeing that they're going to flourish. Yes. Um, many of them are, are startups, uh, or they've been running the, uh, running their businesses for a few years, and it's really to help them build a sustainable yeah, business yeah. and create a strong a strong brand. It's to make sure that their creative element it, it is, is linked to something that will keep their creative element going. Because exactly, you, it's, it's no good making thousands and thousands of uh, quilts if you can't sell them because you've just got them all sitting in a cupboard at the back. You know, that's, exactly. That's so it's about finding routes yeah, to market yeah, for them yeah, exactly. and. You mentioned our textile designers. So some of our textile designers exhibit at trade shows yeah. in London, um, particularly at Top Draw, which is based at Olympia. Right. Um, and uh, one of our designers recently, Claire Vine, was, was at Pulse at a show in London. Mm -hmm. So that gives them the opportunity to meet lots of independent retailers yeah. and also high street retailers yeah, and hopefully fuse a partnership. Yeah. With, with them. Move on to greater things from being local to being national and international. Exactly. Great stuff. Debbie, you've been very, very kindly looking through the newspapers this week as well and uh, picked up some of the stories that caught your attention. I should imagine there's a business slant to a fair few of them. So what's the first one? Well, I just picked up this morning the Sunday Times um, and I'm hit by this headline, The New King of the High Street, mm -hmm. which always intrigues me. Right. Because I used to work for Philip Green. Um, but this man's called Philip Day. Are you allowed to mention that, Philip Green? I should, not the nicest man on the planet, they tell <laughs> me. Was he a nice man? Did you bump um, into him on a regular basis? Let's focus on, let's focus on Philip Day. All right. Um, and he is, I mean, great news for the High Street. He's going to open... 50 new stores. Mm -hmm. um, he currently owns Edinburgh Woollen Mill right. and Peacocks, uh, Jay Norman, uh, Pond and Home. I, I haven't been aware of him, I must admit. Right. So now I'm very aware of him. He had a like for like growth in sales of 6.9% last year. Um, and um, what, what great news that he's so he going to open make 50 branches. 50 branches. Uh, yeah. I suppose across high streets across the entire country, that's not very many, really, is it? If you 
country. You take the number no. of towns there are in the country with the high street. So he's trying to revitalise the high street. He is, which, um, you know, on the back of other news this week yeah. about Mark's suspenses, if I may mention them. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the high street, yes. as we've been chatting right. before we came on air, Nick. Um, and Marks and Spencers, unfortunately, announced a decline in, in sales mm. this week, uh, just referring back to The Guardian. Um, and unfortunately, I've, have closed 30 stores. No, so they're closing um, 30, he's opening 50. They're closing 50, 30, so. he's opening 50. So we've made 20, that's all right. <laughs> that's right. Um, but M&S, you know, what a great brand, what an iconic brand, Um and what I really want to say is, you know, use your high street or lose it. Or lose it. Okay, all right. The high street is there, 50 new shops coming, uh, and we'll watch out for them and see what they are and what they're going to sell, all sorts of mixy upsy things there, isn't it? Quantum <laughs> bills and, and all the other things that go with it. Uh, second story? So, also leading on to the Telegraph mm -hmm. um, and London Craft Week, which actually happened last week. Right. Uh, William Asprey, a great British brand, um, and I'm very close to my heart right. because he's talking about how we need to invest in the craft industry and prevent traditional skills yeah. from dying yeah, out, right. um, providing unique shopping experiences. And, um, you know, he's using three factories across the UK, employing workforces of more than 80 artisans mm. who use traditional techniques which have been handed down through generations. Yeah. This is what it's got to be about, right. Nick. Right. It's got to, yes. I, I suppose the, the problem with the high street has always been whenever you went to a high street, it was always the same as the high street you just left. The high street in, in Manchester is the same as the high street in Birmingham. Is the same. As, they've always got the same multinational companies. But actually having small artisan companies and groups, strange, strange places... That, that you say, oh, that's an interesting shop because they've got different things there. Just like the sorting office, yeah, Nick. Yeah. Um, so Asprey, I mean, just to go back to them, he, they're also talking about uh, education through, uh, about education and craftsmanship. Yeah. Um, and that people really undervalue craft and... You know, when people go into their stores, they think something's really expensive, but it's really important to pick it up, feel the weight and the craftsmanship. Right, right. So also about people aspiring to work in this industry yeah. and creating apprenticeships at specialist colleges. Um, and people really need to know how things are manufactured. And Yes, it, does, it doesn't all come in a plastic bag. It and doesn't. It's, it's, yes, it's like all food just uh, has got to be out there somewhere. Somebody's got to pick it, somebody's got to market it, somebody's got to make it, so to speak. Yeah. And finally? The Crafts Council uh, and their desire to, again, uh, work with education mm -hmm. and training um, so that we support students to develop creative skills and practical skills, um, um, work with micro businesses. Yeah. Um, Which is exactly what you're doing, really, I suppose, your micro, mini micro businesses to start with, and you're there to help sort of them to grow big into a micro business and then maybe exactly, a major business. Exactly. Yeah. And we work with people like the Department of Trade, International right. Trade. Yeah. Um, we encourage residents to go to workshops where they can network with with other small businesses yeah. and take advantage of the of grants which are being offered yeah good excellent well debbie a pleasure to see you thank you ever so much for coming in debbie gent business manager from the sorting office in eastleigh if you want to find out more uh, then get onto their website it's uh, sorting office and there's sorting if you just put sorting office and eastleigh in you're bound to come across it i'm pretty certain search engines are pretty good on that front uh, good to see you debbie thanks for joining us thank you very much